The game release wave rolls on as there are a slew of new games coming tomorrow as well. We'll be highlighting five sick new PlayStation 4 games that will be releasing tomorrow. A pretty major title, the latest game from Supermassive Games, the studio behind Until Dawn is bringing out their new game and that's going to be published by Bandai Namco. And there are a couple of other underrated gems that I do want to go over. I think a lot of interesting titles across the board. So we'll highlight those and while we've just had Gamescom and E3, wasn't too long ago. Square Enix is going to be doing their next major show at TGS 2019. Their lineup has been revealed and they've got their stage schedule so we'll go over that at the end of this video. But first up I do want to go over all of the major releases that are coming tomorrow. First up we have the Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Med, and this is a very interesting title, being that it's the latest game from Supermassive Games, a studio that's been quiet in recent memory. We knew that this was in development, however, they haven't put out a major game since the release of Until Dawn on the PlayStation 4. This one isn't being published by Sony, rather this is being done by Bandai Namco. Supermassive are developing the game, and it definitely has a similar style in that it is a story-driven, violent horror game, and it's a series of standalone own branching cinematic horror games that can also be played online with a friend. So that is a new twist added in Man of Men and compared to Until Dawn. In Man of Men and Five Friends set sail on a holiday diving trip that soon changes into something much more sinister. Now, yes, this is being touted as the Dark Pictures Anthology, so there will be follow-up titles. Do not expect this to be a super lengthy game. I wouldn't even expect it to be, you know, seven to eight hours long. It's probably going to clock in at around four to five hours, but a game like this is going to have a sizable amount of replay value attached to it given that choices do matter in the game and that will twist how the game turns out. Also if you do pre-order the game you do receive the curator's cut featuring new scenes playable from the other character's perspective with brand new choices and decisions to make. That content can only be accessed when you've completed the main story. Nonetheless the game will have you embark on a horrific journey aboard a ghost ship experience your terrifying story with a friend online or go for safety in numbers with up to five players offline. So very interesting in how they're relaying this game out but Obviously, it's going to be a very story-driven game, and the choices are going to have extent ramifications. Given that all playable characters can live or die, the choices you make will decide their fate. Who will you save? Again, the Dark Pictures Man of Medan is due out tomorrow, and I would say this is a pretty major game release, especially if you're one of those people that checked out Until Dawn, and that was one of your surprising great games of this generation. I think this is going to follow a very similar route. All right, also outside of that, we have four other smaller titles that I do want to quickly go over. We won't spend too much time on them, but first, up, we have Agent A, A Puzzle in Disguise. This is a point-and-click mystery title, and it's a suave secret agent adventure game. Your mission, should you choose to accept, is to infiltrate enemy spy Ruby the Rogue's secret hideaway and put a stop to her evil plan. The game touts stylish 1960s inspired art, 35 unique environments to explore, 100 inventory-based puzzles, 50 puzzle screens, 30 achievements to collect for the trophy hunter in all of us. The game has you play as Agent A in a stylish secret agent world full of retro futuristic contraptions, hidden gizmos, gadgets, and clever logic-based puzzles, but do be warned, Ruby is no spy to be taken lightly for a labyrinth of perplexing puzzles in a quirky game of cat and mouse that'll have you wondering whether you're the cat or the mouse. Again, Agent A, a puzzle in disguise, is out tomorrow. Next up, here's a game that I definitely have some interest in, and that is Vambrace Cold Soul. This is a game that released on a PC way back in May, and it wasn't received all too strongly. The Steam reception is mixed at 62%, and it also did have a less than stellar 59 on Metacritic. However, from a presentation standpoint, I find the game rather interesting. It's a story-driven roguelite set amidst a frozen landscape, plan expeditions, and journey to the cursed city surface with your party, wield unique powers, avoid traps, brave strange encounters, and that gothic theme definitely translates into the entire game. It's got a very unique art style, and from that sense, I do find it rather captivating. The game did get good reviews from some outlets, but the overall overarching narrative as far as how this game was, was that it was a little bit of a mixed bag. It was released at $24.99 on PC, probably around the same price or exactly the same price on PlayStation 4. Probably not one that I would say buy right away. However, I could see it going on sale rather quickly and it's a game that is going to get lost in the shuffle pretty quickly. So one to add to your wish list for now and maybe down the line, if it is south of $10, pick it up then. Next up, here's an interesting title, Headspun. This is another point and click mystery title. So we've got a couple 
couple of them tomorrow, and it's an FMV adventure hybrid set in Cortex, the world of Theo Kavinsky's Broken Brain, a game about recovery, discovery, and the ongoing battle between logic and emotion. So this game is tackling something pretty interesting. It touts rich FMV storytelling, branching dialogue, sway the outcome of your interactions, rebuild Cortex, earn neuros to hire staff and commission renovations, retrieve lost memories, and work out what happened the night of Theo's accident, an original synthwave score from Soho Loop. The context of the game's story is rather interesting. After waking from a five-week coma, Theo Kavinsky finds his life in disrepair and with no memory of the accident, it's up to Ted and Teddy, the conscious and subconscious voices in his head to work out what happened and put his life back on track. Headspun is an FMV adventure hybrid which puts you in the shoes of Ted, the director of Cortex, the rational intelligent voice in Theo's head. What Ted thinks is best for Theo isn't necessarily a view shared by Teddy, however, the primal emotional subconscious voice in the process of repairing Cortex, rehiring a team, and finding out what happened the night of the accident, Ted and Teddy must cast aside their difference and learn to work together. Headspun is a game about recovery, discovery, and the ongoing battle between logic and emotion. Again, this looks to be a rather interesting title, and it is due out tomorrow. Another game that could end up surprising a lot of people, and it is being released at a budget price point of $12.99, so that's pretty good. And lastly, I do want to note to you guys, Hookbots, this looks like a pretty interesting title, as it has you battle and challenge your human friends on a multiplayer robot party game, 52 ways to customize your robot, and 14 game modes from knights and dinosaurs to bounty hunters and space warriors. Choose, customize, and crush tons of different bots. A quirky little multiplayer title. It is out tomorrow and it'll be released at $14.99. Looks like it has a decent amount of content to it as well. Interesting presentation and art style attached to this one as well and it's a game that again, not a lot of people are talking about so I wanted to give that some attention. Alright, so those five games are due out tomorrow and remember those five are already parlaying up on a stacked week where earlier this week we got the release of Control, we got Decay of Logos and a bunch of other titles. So this week has been pretty heavy in terms of game releases and it's only gonna get heavier and heavier as the weeks roll on from here on out. Okay, outside of the new game releases, I also want to take you guys through Square Enix's TGS 2019 lineup. Yes, we just had Gamescom happen. Yes, E3 2019 wasn't too long ago, but Square Enix is already gearing up for their next major event, TGS, and they are going to feel a little bit more at home here. This is going to take place in Japan, and they're going to focus in on a lot of their Japanese IP, which for a lot of Square Enix, that is the core of their business, but nonetheless, a lot of interesting titles are scheduled for Tokyo game show, including a lot of Western games on top of that. We've got Dragon Quest 10, you got Dragon Quest 11s that's the Switch version. Final Fantasy VII Remake will be there, and it's going to be playable, so that's pretty remarkable. People at TGS are going to have a chance to actually play the game, and it looks like we're going to get some more gameplay coming out of the Tokyo Game Show. So if you've been wanting to see more of Final Fantasy VII Remake and get more information about the game, that will be dropping at TGS, and that seems like a perfect time to really do what I would think would be the final info drop for the game ahead of its March release. I think after the info drop at TGS, you can kind of go a little quiet about the game. You can release trailer here and there. And we'll see how the game pans out from then on. I'm really interested to see how far episode one is going to take the game because we're still of the mindset that this is going to be an episodic game, even though it's titled Final Fantasy VII Remake, which I think is a little bit misleading. I think if this is going to be an episodic game, you should make it Final Fantasy VII Remake episode one. I mean, Final Fantasy VII has that nostalgia attached to it where some people are just going to be in the store. They're going to see, oh my God, Final Fantasy VII got remade and a lot of people probably would end up buying the game thinking that that it's the entire game. So you have to make it abundantly clear that it is episode one. Either you mark that somewhere in the box art, you have it in the cover, whatever the case may be. If it is going to be in fact episodic and there's going to be more releases at $60, everybody needs to be evidently aware of that because again, this is the type of game that's going to hit a more casual audience. And if you piecemeal it out, which I inherently don't have a problem with as long as every game is robust and has a sizable amount of content, but you have to make that abundantly clear to the gamer. So my apologies for that little tangent but I think that is something that really needs to be reiterated because I don't see a lot of people talking about it. Outside of that, Marvel's Avengers will also be there, so that's awesome. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered, Romancing Saga 3, Star Ocean First Departure R, that's gonna be on PlayStation 4, Trials of Mana, Tropico 6, 
and a couple of other titles will be there. We'll see if they have any surprise announcements or anything like that, but I did want to go through Square Enix's TGS 2019 lineup as it does look pretty good, and Final Fantasy VII Remake definitely going to be the standout game there. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, some interesting game releases tomorrow. The Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medin, Agent A, A Puzzle in Disguise looks cool, and I think Headspun is a game that could end up surprising a lot of people. Really have a lot of high hopes out of that one, as it's an interesting take in terms of premise, and again, Square Enix has announced their TGS 2019 lineup that is going to be headlined by Final Fantasy VII Remake. We're going to get a lot of new information coming out of that. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.